Kate, tell us about what we're about to see here. This you're showing your show unaccompanied here at the Bartlett Center. Can okay. You um, so we're about to look at 20 large portraits, and they're from all over America. Um, these two young ladies are from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. They're sisters, and um, they were, I didn't ask anyone to come in any sort of clothing, but they were in a uniform, and I asked, could they go back and just change their clothes because I didn't want to do a uniform. I understand. And they came back in their handmade full powwow representation. So they made everything. When you wearing. look at these I two, mean, I just, how old are they or were they when you painted them? 14 and 16. And they're homeless. They were homeless. They were then, yes. They were actually living uh, at the school. It was a this, very rough time at that time for young ladies and a full immersion school was like fast. We need to get these young ladies knowing who they are and valuing their traditions and their identities. So this, I was very lucky. This is not normally how you see the homeless population or community portrayed mm -hmm. on canvas with oil, mm -hmm. stark back, black background. Um, th this is, there's humanity in this. This, your work's about humanity, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. These are beautiful young ladies. They're, they are, they are. And they're, you know, it's interesting when you walk through here as you see, the, you, you touch the rainbow that is America, mm -hmm. cities, uh, mm -hmm. ethnicities, yep. Yep. all the way through. I mean, talk about Anna. You did this in 2017, yeah. so yeah. it's before COVID. Anna is, um, was the first city that I worked in, and she was someone who was, I mean, she was absolutely sparky and very, uh, present in in the way that we worked with each other and she would say can i come see what you're doing i said come around and see what i'm doing <laughs> when we look at people experiencing homelessness we have a box we put them in i've been covering homelessness in this community mm -hmm. for 25 years there's a box you seem to have taken them out of that box mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was that intentional yes very intentional very intentional is that the artist the actress the philanthropist, what part of you decided to do it that way? Probably the human. Amen. Yeah. So this and maybe you, mom. You are a mother. I am a mother, yeah. And so you couldn't divorce yourself from any of those. I mean, was the mom feeling overpowering when you were doing this? I just felt very nurturing and very lucky. And I was I was nervous because I had never done, I'd never painted anyone that wasn't a paid model in an art class. So I came into the situation with real reverence for someone who may have had a, a rough morning. That reverence shows in these, and I know as you kind of walk through, did you find some of these had had rough mornings? I wouldn't know because I was very um, interested in having the space be safe and neutral. So I was not interested in asking questions that may, be, may have painful answers. How do you tell your, their stories? That's interesting. That's an interesting mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. to, you knew there were painful answers. Mm -hmm. You were looking for the other side of the That's story. Right. There you go. Wow. That's, that is. You're my audience. You are my audience. I, I, you know, I am, because I will tell you what strikes me is I, I walked through here two days ago. The hardest thing to do covering homelessness is to give voice to the voiceless. They're not saying anything here. They obviously are. You've got some stuff, but you've given the voice. I mean, look at this, TJ. Okay, this is TJ and that's Kevin, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. What is TJ's voice? He, he looks like any kid you see on the street yeah. in any city in America. Yeah. yeah, and by the way, all of them were uh, 
incredible models. So if I'm working with professional models, and this is the first time that I'm working with people, um, they were excellent models. They sat, they sat quietly, they didn't move around. We had music going that they enjoyed. So I think that calmed them down. And Were you doing it at the shelters or did you take them away from the No, shelters? I went straight to where they, they were. They were, yeah. So they were in full circle services from some of the best working centers for adolescent homeless youth. When you see the title, and my colleague Hannah James so beautifully hit this on the story mm -hmm. she did last night, the unaccompanied piece of this, unaccompanied is not an accident. There's a reason for this yeah, title. That's right, that's right. Tell us why. Well, unaccompanied um, was a word that really jumped out at me, and, and it, it, for me, it was a word I'd, I, I feel like I'd never seen before, unaccompanied. It's the a drama government. of that is that we're all, you're accompanied, I'm accompanied, I have people that I can call, I'm in a pinch, I need some help. But unaccompanied, I, I, I don't even know what that's like. So it hit me so deeply that I felt like, okay, no one should be unaccompanied, but these young people are. It sounds like government bureaucracy to me. And, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know just when you look at, at that, because there's so much governmental stuff but policy yes. policy policy that's a much better word thank you but you know when you look at these and i think you said it early, earlier before we start talking a lot of these kids are in circumstances they didn't create that's right that's right does that make them more powerful subjects and does that make their stories more powerful i think what it points to is that we as communities are not listening and serving families. So you got a mom, a dad, and if they're struggling, the children are struggling. They yes. happen to be the, the low end of the totem pole. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't get to vote. I mean, until they're 18, but yeah, I get it. I get it. I want to walk through the rest. I know this is, you know, your work is so moving. And it, but the dark background strike me, and then mm -hmm. these, this is, I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you, this is my favorite one. Uh. I don't know why, except when it comes to art, I know what I like, I know what I don't like. I mean, it's, it's we all have our preferences. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to me, when I see that, I see this young man, mm -hmm. and his name is not on the wall. Well, uh, okay. Might have. Okay. I'll, his but, name is Anubis. Anubis? Anubis. Anubis. Mm -hmm. Where was he? San Francisco. And you know where he is right now? Where? Here in Columbus. He came to see this. Wow. We were able to bring him. Oh, wow. And uh, so when I painted him, he was in a, the struggling part of his story. And now he's, um, he's in Columbus for this show. When I see this, I see a kid that has a lot to say, but he's not saying anything. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a fair assessment? For he's a pretty strong guy. He actually is. Um, he actually works and represents his community. Okay. And his being a part of this series was an act of activism, because he is talking about it, being unsheltered, what it's like. He's ready to talk. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's, what about the dark backgrounds? Why did you choose to go with this? With, uh, with compositionally, it was to represent like what's nothing's overhead. Okay. Yeah. Fair. 